What's up, America? You know what time it is. It's 12 o'clock. It's time for lunch break with the man who needs no introduction, the champion of char, the guru of grilling, the sultan of smoke, Chef Greg. What's up, John? I thought for a second they were going to call me charming. I was beginning to blush a little bit, but <laughs> I'll take the, the uh, champion of char. That's a good one. That's you. What's up, Rectech family? I'm Chef Greg, your director of culinary innovation. And you know what time it is? It is 12 o'clock. It is Monday. It's time for another amazing Rectech Rules lunch break uh, here at the Rectech Academy Kitchen in good old Evans, Georgia. And it is hotter than the surface of the sun out here. <laughs> it's true. Like 90% humidity. I walked outside and I started to drip, so I'm going to apologize in advance. But um, it's Monday. We have a great recipe for you today. So if you guys want to check out this recipe and all of the recipes, go to rectechgirls.com slash lunch break. Go ahead and put your email address in there and uh, get these amazing recipes. And go ahead and smash that share button while you're at it. Show us some love. Chef John, what would you get into this weekend? Oh, uh, man, I had a great weekend. I went and saw Brooke. We chilled out in uh, Buford. Uh, she's about to move to a new place, so we just nice. packed some stuff up. Yeah, it was cool. Nice. I lived in Alfreda, which is like a hop oh, and yeah. skip away from Buford. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We uh we went paddling. Paddling. We went paddling. Yes. We uh we went to Betty's Branch and s visited our friends over there at a was it outdoor Augusta? Augusta outdoor. 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 That's I right. Get it backwards. Yeah. So appreciate you guys hooking up with some life jackets because <laughs> apparently if you're on a paddleboard, yes, it's a vessel. It you got to have a PFD, and we ordered PFDs, personal flotation devices. <laughs> For those of you that don't know like much like myself, right, we know. ordered the automatic inflatable belt so they don't take up a lot of room. Oh, cool. But uh, they'll be here today. Oh, that's really cool. But I cool. did get some dope water shoes. Did the whole family get on paddle boards? So it was you, Julie, the kids, everybody yeah, so, on the board? Yeah, uh, so Isabel paddled with Isabel on her board up, and then I had her back. Okay. So I think she had the harder trip because she was <laughs> upstream. How that worked out, I don't know. And then uh, we threw Andrew on a kayak. So it was great. That great sounds day. Like great. But today we're going to go old school for you guys. You know I love Italian food, okay? I used to work in an Italian restaurant for many a moon, and this was a great way to use a lot of leftovers. And if there's one thing that I hate about leftovers is roasted potatoes. Why? Because they taste like garbage. <laughs> you can never reheat a roasted potato to have it delicious, right? That's I mean, true. You're 100% right about that. They're fantastic when they're hot, but when they get cold, you try to either microwave them or, like, cook them again, not so much. Even baked potatoes, unless you're going to cube it up and make, like, hash browns with it. But this is a great way to utilize some roasted potatoes or baked potatoes. We're going to use Italian sausage today, and this has already been cooked. But you can use any meat. You can use pulled pork, brisket. Uh, let's say you got some extra smoked chicken laying around. Again, this is super simple. And it is a Monday, which means we're busy. Catching up from the weekend. That's right. So I'm taking a cheat. We're going to use a food processor for all of the hard work because I know you guys love me chopping some stuff up with a knife <laughs> <sighs> but I had a long weekend my arms <laughs> are, are really tired like I mean I was we got the boards loaded up and I'm driving home and it's like every bump in the truck it was like oh not another one it was hard so we're gonna enlist uh, a food processor if you don't have a food processor don't worry you can do this by hand uh, get these good and cold you can put them in a, on a grater as well but um yeah Chef Greg, what food processor is that that you're using? That's so not this, like any food processor I've ever seen. The, yeah, this is probably not a food processor you're going to find at your local Wally World and or Target. Uh, this is a RoboCoop, and those of you that have ever worked in a professional kitchen know that this is, like, prized possession. You could make anything in a RoboCoop. You could put a horse head in here, Whoa. and it's going to come out smooth as butter. Whoa. Um, just, it's just a commercial food processor, that's all. That's all it is. Just super fancy. But, yeah, it's the R2, so... Um, yeah, you like Star Wars out yeah, there. It's the R2-D2. R2-D2. What you call it. Love that guy. So, But we've got, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Just a recap, or uh, I guess preface, because we'll do that first. That's we right. have two pounds of cooked meat. You can use any meat you want. Again, chicken, pork, brisket, beef. Maybe you've got assorted sausages laying around. No worries. We've got about half a pound of spinach. you got about eight cups of mozzarella. would be the big bag. We've got... Uh, three pounds of roasted potatoes. You could also use mashed potatoes for this too. Okay. And we've got some of that shaved um, Parmesan cheese. Mm, that's delicious. But we're gonna put some herbs in here first because I like it extra herby. So we'll get some rosemary in there. Country Club almost took out a light. He did. That would have been bad. <laughs> but any flavors that you like in your potatoes. So we've got some rosemary, some sage. And this is a really good savory dish. It's kind of like a lasagna. Just a little bit different. And then we'll add some oregano. 
And you got to use that Italian oregano. That's the good, good stuff. Which we have some of that growing in the garden out there. Where uh, do you Chef? think I got this That's from? That's what man. I'm talking about. Now, I did make sure, John, they were sharp scissors. Okay. I know there was a, you know, a back and forth. When you're trimming yes. any sort of herbs or vegetables, use a very sharp um, knife That's or right. scissors or shears because you don't want to do, um, you don't want to put that plant into shock. That's right. And crushing those cellular walls will put the plant into shock. You want a sharp, sharp snip right through there. Ouch. Hey, Chef Greg. Ouch. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Craig Linhart. It's his birthday today, and he's watching. Happy birthday, Craig. Thank you so much for watching. All right, everybody in the comments section, go ahead and sing happy birthday to Craig. That's I know it. it's probably too yes. long for most threads, but just go ahead and comment down below just the full lyrics of happy birthday. You can copy and paste it. Maybe that's a, an opportunity for you. Let's go ahead. Happy birthday, Craig. Happy birthday, What are Craig. you having good cooked for you today? That's what I want to know. All right, we're going to add a little parsley in here. And I'm not going to go crazy with trying to chop it up because i got a food process. And it's going to do it all for me. And, of course, we got some herbs. We're going to put some of that Colton's freaking Greek in there. And we talked about it for the last couple episodes. If you want to season, you know, a little more moderately, a little more, you know, cautiously, but if you want to engage riot mode, just flip that lid and go ahead and engage riot mode. Okay? A couple tablespoons. We're just going to pulse it. We're going to kind of break those herbs down. It's going to be really good. Guys, then, make sure if you have any comments or questions, you put them in the uh, comment section below. I will be reading those out to Chef Greg. And we'll be grabbing our, our potatoes, and we'll go ahead and put our potatoes in here. And try not to drop them all over the floor. Charlie Ware's in the comment section. What's up, Charlie He said Ware? his brother, uh, the owner of um, Noble Jones, uh, just made a brisket on the RT340. That's what I'm talking about. Did he bring us any? No, he's at the beach. Charlie's at the beach. We're wishing him well at the beach with his fam. Charlie. Have a good time. <laughs> All right, we're just going to pulse this. I don't want to make mashed potatoes, but I do want to break it up. Okay. And if there's chunks of potato, that's cool. Chunks of herbs. We'll go ahead and put that in the bowl. We got some baby spinach laying around. This is a great way to clean out the fridge. So we're just going to take some spinach. We're done with our friend, Mr. R2-D2. Love yeah. that thing right there. We're just going to chop up uh, some spinach. And you can see, Country Club, we got the herbs chopped up. And again, good potato edge in there. And that's going to be the base and give this cannelloni some structure. Okay? So we're just going to rough chop some spinach. Nothing crazy. If you don't like spinach, don't add it. It's okay. If some leaves are bigger than others, not a big deal. Grandma did not mind. <laughs> now, my grandmother never made cannellonis. She made a lot of really good Italian dishes, but never cannellonis. She made good lasagna. She never made the manicotti either. Really? I don't know why. Yeah. Hmm. She'd make lasagna, but never, never manicotti. That's funny. Top fan Kevin Bomber said he crushed Greg's hoisin glaze lamb chops over the weekend. He did. He also put some really good pictures of that on the, uh, the good old interwebs as well. That's what I'm talking so. about. All right, so we've got our potatoes. We have our spinach. We'll go ahead and add some garlic. And again, this is cheat day Monday. We're adding garlic in the tube, and that's completely fine. Okay. We're going to add our sausage. That's two pounds of sausage. And you could use any sort of uh, ground meat you want. Uh, you can use chopped brisket, whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. I'm going to give this a pre-mix here. But we're cleaning out the fridge, using some leftovers. But super colorful, super delicious. And then we've got some whole milk ricotta. We're going to add that whole container. That's going to be 32 ounces of ricotta cheese. And we're going to add, I don't know, about six cups of that cheese. Yep, that'll work, because the rest of that will be for the topping. And then we'll add some of that delicious shaved Parmesan. We'll save a little bit for the top. This is Jody's favorite cheese, too. Why? Because you just do this. We eat it all day long. Mm -hmm. Chef John, what you got, buddy? Uh, Adam said that he just won a 590 from Jason at Dad's That Cook. He said, what's the best way to celebrate? Well, I would do the happy dance, because you just won an, an $899 grill. So welcome to the family. I would celebrate by finding the most amazing Wagyu brisket and just smoke a brisket That's or anything. Hot dogs for the kids, hamburgers. Maybe you want to make this recipe here. However you want to live your rectech lifestyle, buddy. But congratulations on the win. 
Um, Jody's been on that show a couple times. Yeah, he has. Actually. He's got that custom Dad's That Cook cutting board. Mm-hmm. That thing is nice. So, Go ahead and let me know when you want to cook with me. I'm a dad, too. I got three of them. <laughs> so Jody's playing catch-up. He's only got two. That's true. So. That's true, and they're both little. Uh, Chef Greg, if, uh, if people out there don't want to use ricotta, what is a good substitute cheese to use? Um, how do you not like ricotta? I know. I mean, I you know. could use mascarpone would be fine. Um, some people, again, my mother-in-law makes great lasagna. She uses cottage cheese in hers as well. Okay. Um, but why don't you like ricotta? Yeah, that, I don't like know. Like it kind of, ricotta is that cheese that you love, but it don't taste like anything. <laughs> and it just makes everything delicious. It's true. Um, but the potato in here is going to act like a nice binder. You don't have to add any eggs in here. It's all going to hold together really nice. And then I told you it was cheat day Monday. Live audience up there. We're going to take some fantastic, fresh lasagna sheets. You can pick these up. These are typically by your Italian cheese section of your local grocery store. Um, I've seen these at Walmart, Publix, Kroger, all over. These are fresh lasagna sheets. That's cool. And you, you can do this with the, the dried ones, except you would roll them a little bit differently. So we're going to grab those sheets out of here. And I am going to grab some gloves because I do not want to make a complete mess in my hands. I'm going to grab a smaller spoon or a, a BFS, a big freaking spoon. Just depends. But we've got, uh, they come in packages of six. So we've got six of our lasagna sheets. And like I said, if these were dried noodles, normally they're in half. You can roll those up this way. But we're going to do them in sheets. It'll make sense here in a second. We've got some really good sauce. We're going to put in, I don't know, a couple of BFL, big freaking ladle <laughs> of sauce. About a quarter inch or so on the bottom. Italian food, and, and John, you know, you can you can chime in here, buddy, yes. is not rocket science. No, it's really not. It's really not. Honestly, it's peasant food. It's really simple. So we're going to take that, and we're going to put in a spoonful of our mixture. And we're going to repeat. And you could put mushrooms in here if you like mushrooms. You could put Ooh. any sort of uh, vegetable you like. Okay. Or you can put no vegetables, just the sausage and cheese. You want to kind of make it as even as you can. And you can use a pastry bag if you want, but, I mean, this is rustic. So all you're going to do is roll it up like a little burrito, okay, and then kind of tuck it under itself. And then what you can do is, if you've got a little, a little hole right there, mm -hmm. just go ahead and grab mm -hmm. your spoon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just cap mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. Just like roll that. That's it. it. Up. But you want this to be like the Cheech and Chong of cannellonis. Yes. And we then do. put that seam down, and then this is a 9 by 13 pan. It'll fit perfectly. And this will fit six cannellonis per pan. So, you know, just repeat. I love it. Chef Greg, a lot of people out here talking about your brookies. Brookies. Brookies are really good. Yeah, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're missing out. Uh, brookies. You take um, just a boxed brownie mix. Follow the directions, put it in a pan, and then grab some chocolate chip cookie dough. And just, like, break up chunks and just throw the chocolate chip into the brownie mix. That sounds now, I awesome. did not invent said recipe or name. It was actually taken from one of our good friends that we go camping with a good bit. Um, but Brookies, amazingly delicious. That sounds awesome. So, but this is an easy one. You can prep this up. This freezes great. So if you want to make a meal or several meals ahead of time, you could spend a day, and this is a big mix. This will give us a lot. So if you guys want to learn how to meal prep, go ahead and smash that share button. Yeah. Comment down below. Yeah. You could easily make a couple pans of this, stick it in the freezer, and then, you know, when it's time, just reheat it. Be really good. Craig Linhart says it looks like Italian sushi. You know, put some rice in there. <laughs> it's a great way you can use up leftover arborio rice instead of the potato, um, but traditionally it's with that potato. Um, it's a really good, easy one to do. I mean, like I said, don't overthink it. Italian food is all about, you know, family comfort. That's right. And um, full bellies make happy bellies. That's so, again, just kind of smush it up. <clears throat> and that's we, it. So we have Sarah Starr in the comment section. She's watching. What's up, everybody from Texas? We got to do a... Uh, they're coming back yeah. for, uh, for Academy. Because they had such a good time. For they sure said they, they could not miss out. Her and Roddy had a great time with us, and uh, we had a great time with them. And like I said, it's going to be a lot of fun to see them back here at the worldwide headquarters of Rectech Grills. We will be releasing Academy dates probably in August for 2021. So don't worry, everybody. We heard you loud and clear. That's right. We're going to uh, probably increase some dates for 2021. It's going to be super exciting. 
But this is a great job for the kids. Get them in the kitchen. Yeah. We'll speed this up. This cutting board's big enough. We can go. We can go two by. That's what I'm here. talking about. But it's Chef another John, and another great way uh, to not heat your house up, Chef Greg. Cooking on the grill. It's like 9,000 degrees in Georgia. So this is, gives you another option of not having to like make your air conditioner work that hard. Now I would recommend just prep this inside. Yes. You can stay cool. Yes. But go ahead and prep it inside, and that way you're good to go. And keep the heat outside on the Rectech. Anything you cook in your oven, um, you can cook in the grill. And ultimately, it's going to be better than the oven because that controller is that PID controlled. Uh, it's going to give you that great temperature consistency, great flavor. And who doesn't like wood-fired food? Whether it's pizza, True. cookies, brownies, cakes, pies. I mean, why not? Chef Greg, is cream cheese an acceptable uh, substitute for ricotta? <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever told you? I've told you my cream cheese stories, but this is this is great. So the uh, cream cheese, okay, not a huge fan. Unless it's on a bagel, give me a schmear. But they were trying to make brie cheese, and somehow they ended up making cream cheese. Now, if you've ever had brie cheese, it's not at all the same. No. Not even but close. We love our, our friends at uh, Philadelphia Cream Cheese. They make a fantastic product. You could but use cream cheese in here, but if you don't like ricotta cheese, how are you going to like cream cheese? I mean, it, that's it, true. It's, that's totally true. All right. So here's kind of the secret to making sure. Now, if these were uh, dry noodles, you want to par cook them, but these are fresh, so we don't have to to boil them. We're going to take a little bit of sauce, and not a lot, just a little. It's going to add a little moisture there. So here's the secret, and this is the same whether I'm cooking lasagna, cannellotis, manicottis. You gotta grip, get that big old roll of plastic wrap, okay? Then you cover this with plastic wrap. Okay. And then Showing you grab that secrets. big old bowl or big old roll of aluminum foil. Wrap it up. What that's going to do is that's going to trap all that steam, and that's going to help steam the noodles without losing any moisture. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, you already cooked the potatoes on the Rectech. You cooked the sausage on the Rectech. It's already going to have great smoke flavor. So 350 degrees on the RT700, bada bing, bada boom. Take that one on. Take this one off. Yeah, yeah. And what we can do is... Drum roll, please. <laughs> 30 minutes later, if I don't burn myself in the process, we've got that perfectly steamed noodles, that sauce. Oh my god. But it's not gracious. done yet because we gotta go like this. We gotta put more cheese on the top. Yes. More cheese, Chef Greg. And then we're gonna grab a little of this cheese. Maybe all of that cheese. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna go back on here for like 10, 15 minutes. Yes. So, I mean, we literally prepped dinner for a week in 28 minutes. You did. You 28 it. minutes. That's it. Chef Super Greg, simple. what would be some good side dishes for this? Well, that would be a great side dish. Maybe if you had chicken in there, you could do a delicious roast chicken. Um, maybe some green beans, a nice crisp salad. Ooh, um, okay. This is going to be pretty filling, pretty heavy with all the potatoes and stuff. But you can absolutely, you know, go ahead and serve that with something a little bit lighter. It just depends how you want to live the Rectech family. Some grilled asparagus would be fantastic. My vote would be some garlic bread. Lots yeah. and lots and I, lots of I garlic bread. I agree with bread. that. Or cheesy bread. That would yeah, be delicious. For sure. Chef John, what you got, buddy? Anna Elizabeth asks, is this recipe already emailed to us? Nope. This recipe will be emailed to you after I write it down and send it to Charlie. And Charlie will create <laughs> the menu card. The menu card will then go to Mary Bryson. Mary Bryson will set up the email, and then Rectech Grills will send you the email. It's kind of a process. It is a process. And speaking of the process, Chef Greg, I'm glad you gave some of these people a shout out. Did you know it was National Camera Day today? Really? That's right. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to all of our camera guys, all of our support staff, Country Club, Ben Marshall, Ben Lowe, Rachel Banks, uh, everybody who's shooting and helping us, Jordan Johnson. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so, guys so much. We could not do it without you. Shoot yeah. Shoot yeah. Shoot yeah. You got to say it in threes. Shoot yeah. So, John, I did not know that. Yeah. I need to uh, update my computer with national days of importance because right. clearly that one passed me by. It did pass you right on by, Chef Greg. But like I said, this recipe is enough to do two 9 by 13 pans. And other than stare at you in the face for about eight more minutes while that cheese melts, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and prep another pan because, you know, this 
is going to be lunch for people around here at Rec Tech Grills, and we got some hungry people. So, yeah, always they're always hungry, Chef Greg. Always, always. hungry. We can't cook enough. John, you got a question, buddy? Yes. Uh, uh, top fan Vince Smitka wants to know what kind of wine would you serve with this? Um, yes. Very cold wine. Now, <laughs> I don't come from the camp that it's white with fish and red with meat. Right. You drink what you like. So what would you, if you were going to drink something with this, do you have a favorite that you would you pair with this? Honestly, a little effervescence wouldn't be bad. Okay. A little Prosecco, I think. You know, the, the bubbles would help uh, accentuate some of the flavors uh, in the sausage. Shoot but you. if you want to do a nice Chianti, um, you know, even like a, a, a Table Blanco, a nice Shoot crisp yeah. white wine, go right ahead. I mean, Shoot like yeah. I said, however you want to live the Rectech lifestyle. To me, I'm drinking uh, some delicious Perrier sparkling because I'm trying to watch my dad bod a little bit. And, you know, sparkling and water is much better. We're watching that dad bod, Chef Greg. I looking mean, good. You know, sparkling water is a little bit better for me than uh, <laughs> the Cokes. So I figured, hey, why not? But, um, yeah, maybe a little Prosecco for me. Chianti would be really good, too. You know, however you want to live the Rectech lifestyle. John, what you got, bud? Top fan Zach wants to know, where did you get those pasta sheets? Uh, we picked these up at the local grocery store. Uh, these were the fresh pasta noodles. You can pick these up usually by the Italian cheese section uh, at your local grocer. Um, if you don't see them, ask because uh, they might be in the frozen section. You can always make your own pasta dough. Get some good, you know, uh, semolina flour and make your own pasta dough. You know, you got that pasta roller when you got married in 1972. That's right. You probably haven't <laughs> used right. it much. That's exactly you know? right. Oh, my god. There's gosh. also attachments for the um, KitchenAid machines that have made things pretty popular. But That's so funny. You know, what you got, John? Uh, Doug asks, he's uh, in need of a good food processor. Which one are you using again? So this is a commercial unit. It's a RoboCoop. Um, and I'm a big advocate for, like, marketplace items. Maybe you got a restaurant, and I hate to say it, but this time, you know, year maybe restaurants are going out of business maybe there's a wholesale market near you you might be able to get one of those pretty cheap now i will brand new they're like a couple thousand dollars like 15 to 2500 dollars depending yeah. on what sort of uh um, attachments you want which for a food processor for the house is pretty absurd but for here we grind up a lot of meats i'll make sausages salamis we do a lot of food production so it, it does save a lot of time but you might be able to find a used one out there and um That's super handy about. yeah Super handy. They come with all kind of attachments. Yeah, you got absolutely different cutting blades, and if you want to do um, you know, thin slices yeah. and, mm -hmm. and shreds of certain things. But Love, love, love it. Well, we almost got this second one done. And like I said, if you're going to go through the steps to make this, make a couple because you're going to eat them. But more importantly, you can eat them anytime you want. Meal prep it. Like, yeah. Make your life easy. Really? Julie made a lasagna yesterday for Wednesday. Uh, we were home. I was listening to a podcast while she was doing that. Uh, next time, I will more actively participate. Oh, no. So, babe, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Well, it was, uh, you know, disc golf is back on, and I was watching some <laughs> live coverage, and it was the last four holes, and they were within one stroke of each other, and, I mean. It was it was close. It was it was up there. So, you know, I put in the headset to a, this one's going to be a little fat than the other one, but. Chef Greg, what yeah, is Julie's favorite dish? Like, what dish does she do that just blows you away every time she does it? So, she makes a really good seven-layer dip. She Ooh. also makes really good banana bread. Really? Um, yeah. I okay. just love the fact that she uses the grill because she would never, <laughs> never, never, I can say it again, but you know what I'm saying, never <laughs> touch a propane or a charcoal, charcoal grill. That's the awesome. fact that she can turn the grill on from a phone, awesome. Because before, if she had to, like, you know, get dirty and, like, smell like gas or worry about, like, blowing herself up, right. she'd never do it. Not happening. But the fact that you can turn on a rec tech, from your phone, any smart device anywhere in the world, she's going to use it. Um, but, yeah, she's going to cook that lasagna Wednesday night because I work Wednesday night because we got after hours. That's right. So she's going to cook that Wednesday night, and hopefully there's some left. Yeah. I'm not so sure. It's one of Isaac's favorites. She only made <laughs> one pan of it. So hopefully she saves me a piece. Yeah, save, save Greg the big piece of lasagna, everybody. Come on now. I like the crispy, crunchy corner, too. Oh, okay. Like, don't sleep on that corner. That's right. So I'm going to go ahead Greg, and how do these freeze? How do these, uh, they freeze well? Like, how long do they last Absolutely. in the freezer? Um, anything in the freezer, like three months, you want to use it up. But, like I said, they're going to freeze just fine. The cheese is going to be fine. Okay. You know, if you're going to make stuff like this, make extra. If you know you're cooking sausage for this, make extra. Maybe you want chicken in here. So when chicken's on sale at the grocery store, maybe you get some chicken thighs. Maybe you get some extra chicken breasts. You know, don't overthink it, but make it easy on yourself. That's because right. you can, it's really hard to eat the same thing four days in a row. But something different four days in a row 
I mean, you know, cook a brisket on a Saturday. Boom, you got brisket cannelloni on on, uh, on Monday. Maybe you got some leftover pulled pork. You That's got it right here. About. So I think this one's probably about ready. Chef Greg, any suggestions for some new appetizer ideas for the fourth weekend? Oh, man, shrimp cargo is a really good one. You mm. can do those mini bruschetta bites. And again, we've got a big enough grill here, 702 square inches of cook space. We can fit three 9 by 13 man, pans in so here. Good. Country Club, I'll go ahead and pull this one out. This cheese is almost all the way melted, oh but I'm getting gosh, impatient. that looks because so good. This is lunch break, not day break, so I want to make sure we get to eat this. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got enough room for three 9 by 13 pans in there. Kept our forks clean and sanitary. I love it. My Chef, my cannelloni's going in the box after that. Chef Greg, if you were gonna if you froze this and you were gonna reheat it, what temperature would you reheat at? Uh, for 320, how long? 325 for about an hour. I'd probably pull it out of the fridge, you know, uh, the day before. Let it come up to temp, you know, in the fridge, and then I would um oh man, this is gonna be so good and so hot. 325 for about an hour. We go 350 wrapped. Oh, look at that steam. Yep, that's oh, frenulum man, burning that looks right there. So good. 350 when it's wrapped up like it is, but if you want to go lower and slower, you can go 325. But again, that plastic wrap on the top helps steam everything, protect all that moisture, and um, I want to eat this. Yeah, but I, I like the frenulum. roof of my mouth. Don't burn your frenulum, Chef like, Greg. That's potatoes in there. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pansy out a little bit. We're gonna <laughs> cut it open, get smaller bites. We'll give this one to Chef John. We'll pull off a piece of this. Uh, Guys, show Parmesan Chef Greg some right love there. right now. I need to see some hearts. I need to see some thumbs up. I need to see some wow faces. All right, John, I got your, I got your fork ready. All right, I'm coming. But Chef Greg is doing it up today. Well, we will cheers. I know, sausage and potato cannellonis. Oh, my gosh, I feel so blessed. Cheers, buddy. Cheers to you, my friend. This way, if I burn my mouth, you burn your mouth, True. Too. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh huh. There is a chef way to eat in hot food uh -huh. though. You got to roll it and get the steam out. Uh huh. That uh -huh. was delicious. Killing it how again, Chef Greg. All day, every day. How this did you swallow that? Oh man. <laughs> mm. So but delicious. It's amazing. Taste the sausage. You get the cheese, the peppers from the 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 uh, pepper and the fennel from the sausage in there. A lot of the herbs from the potatoes. But yeah. the consistency is really nice. Yeah, it, the, I like it. That's it's, what I was gonna say. It's it's lasagna esque. Yeah. But again, it's portion control because you just kind of cut one away and be good to go. But again, if you guys want to check out this recipe and all of the recipes from from Rectech Rolls Lunch Break, make sure you go to rectechrolls.com slash lunch break. Put your email address in there. We'll get the email out to you in a couple days. Like I said, it's a process around here. We had to test this recipe. That's right. So I didn't just cook one. I cooked it a couple times to make sure it's dialed in for you guys, the Rectech family. Because unlike other people, they just type up some random babble and That's send right. it out. We taste test these to make sure they're as delicious as possible. Um, but you'll get this recipe in a couple days. And make sure you guys join us every day at 12 noon Eastern for uh, lunch break presented by Rectech Grills. It's going to be amazing. Chef John's got something coming up good for uh, tonight rather for Backyard right. and Beyond. That's right. Jody's got tomorrow lunch. And then all week long, make sure you guys join us. Wednesday at 5 o'clock is going to be Rectech After Hours. we got something up our sleeves. We always for this do, week. right? Always have something always, up your sleeves. Yeah. Always. And then if you guys want to win some cool swag, we're giving away a, some good stuff. I'm not going to ruin it for you guys, but make sure you watch last week's Fun Day Friday, and make sure you join us for this week's Fun Day Friday, oh, right. because you just might find yourself the winner of the granddaddy of them all. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to leave that one right there. Mm -hmm. That's it. That Jeff, Wheel of Reg Tech is amazing. You know what? Amazing. I don't normally have good luck with stuff like that for myself, <laughs> but for you guys. You kill it. I think I'm like batting 700. You really are. You could put me in the DH for the Yankees, <laughs> and in a shortened season, I, I might just put a couple over the wall. That's because the truth. Because my, uh, my slugging percentage, it's up there. I'm just, I'm just going to oh, throw man, that out that's there. That's so funny. I don't know how they calculate the slugging percentage, but I know in the American League, they've got slugging percentage just versus regular batting average. Country Club, am I wrong? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have no clue what that means, but it's something important. Um, but baseball is, is almost back. Professional disc golf is back. And, um, yeah, everything's just getting a little bit brighter out there. Chef Greg, so tell us, who's your favorite professional disc golfer right now? Who's mm. the Tiger Woods of, of disc golf? Well, the guy that wins all the time is this guy, Paul McBeth, from Virginia. But okay. he says he's from Huntington Beach. But I'm sorry, I'm not a fanboy. I can't just <laughs> vote for you and root for you because you always win. And when I say you always win, 
you always win. He's that good, Dude, huh? It's, ri it's ridiculous. Okay. It's ridiculous. Okay. Um, but I got to give props to my boy Garrett Gerthy out there. Uh, yes. He's on his way to Minnesota right now to compete in an event uh, next week. So Garrett Gerthy and uh, Jessica Weiss, they travel together. Awesome. They, uh, they literally, they crush it out there. He can throw further than anybody. He's got some <laughs> style. But they also cook on an RT340 on the road. Awesome. So they, live in a, they, they, they travel the U.S., Living the rec tech living lifestyle. the rec tech lifestyle on the road, and he kills it. Like they went deep sea fishing. They don't eat fish often. Yeah. And uh, he was cooking some fish on the rec tech. Now they love fish. Why? Because they cooked it on a rec tech. Yeah. So maybe if you don't like something, there you go. It's not because you don't like what it is. Tell them, chef. You Greg. just don't like how it was cooked. Mm -hmm. So my bet to you guys: cook it on a rec tech. Give us a call. Ask for Chef John, myself, or Jody. We will give you a recipe. I guarantee you're gonna like it. That's, that's right. A, that's a strong statement. That's true. But right. no true. truer statement true. has ever been said. It's true. So, Chef John, anything else before we, we no, shut it down? Man, they're just having a good time there. Thank you so much for this awesome recipe. All right, so before we close it out, do me a favor. That way we can show Ray and Ron and Ben and everybody else that Chef John, myself, and everybody here in the marketing department are doing our jobs. Go ahead and smash that share button. Comment down below. Give us some hearts. Give us some wows. We will see you at, at the, the Rec Tech. Tech. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Another fine do, show, Vince. Do, we appreciate do. you. Clifford Ball, Rick your 700 is going to ship very soon. Senate. Terry Poling in, in Ohio. In. What's up, buddy? We have people joining us from down. Indiana today. John Live Myers in Midlands, Texas. What's like. up? It's Damon Ware says he needs some new swag. Lifestyle. Go to RecTechRolls.com. We got do, some new swag. Douglas Ivey, appreciate it, buddy. Kevin Bomber, good seeing you. Appreciate you joining. John Starcevich, huge yeah. Do, do, do.